I stand here a victim of the influence of Emmanuel Goldstein, guilty on all counts. Okay, Lynn, if you could uh, give your testimony about your experience with Reiki, um, take as much time as you need, um, maybe what got you into it, what you saw within it, and how you got out of it. I know it's kind of a broad question, but if we could just start there and give people an idea of, of uh, your experience so they, they know where you've come from. Okay. Um, well, I got into um, the occult. Uh, it, it just started with my palms being red and somebody telling me I was a light worker, a nurse that I worked with at, a, at the hospital. She told me that. Uh, then I started kind of being a medium, uh, took classes, trying to learn how to talk to the dead to uh, um, be a psychic, do all these things, you know, they, they, the devils will uh, t make you think that you're more special than you are, and this is a common thread, uh, they always try to make you think you're really, really special, you know, oh, you're very psychic, and it's been running in your genes, and you've had thousands of uh, past lives, and you were always a healer, and, you know, your first thing, your first word you hear is the healer word, and it's like, oh, okay, I'm a healer, so, you know, you start going, and then, and then I met a lady that, that actually did Reiki, so I had my, um, my first uh, Reiki treatment, and I was sold, and then she just so happened to be having a class not too long after that, and asked me if I wanted to to become a Reiki uh, practitioner, and, you know, the spirits I was talking to, they said, oh, yes, yes, this is your destiny. This is what you need to be doing. You know, I completely turned my life over to these beings that I was talking to named Abraham. Um, I mean, they guided everything. Uh, it almost was to the point where they told me everything to do except for maybe what to wear, <laughs> my clothes, you know. Some people even go that far. But um, so I took the class. Of course, it cost me $350. It wasn't free. And, you know, we learned how to um, to do this Reiki, and it was very interesting, very, very powerful, very uh, – this is not – this is not a – something that doesn't work you know this is something that that you can in, in the class she gave us a, a bottle of water and we ran energy to this bottle of water and then we drank the water and so we got to taste this Chris I can't even put it into words of how deceptive and how cunning and how um, what's the word I'm looking for enticing that all this is um, and then it was like I think I started talking to uh, a specific uh, light being um, I'm not gonna say his name anymore um, I think I've told you before uh, we'll say for this for, for the for the audience I'm gonna say this this demon's name his name was Nebu N-E-B-U and then he started guiding my life and I basically just turned it all over to him. And uh, once I had my Reiki attunements, and that's where they actually, the Reiki uh, practitioner that's, that's doing the class, the master, puts symbols into your crown chakra, which is the, supposedly the chakra. It's, it's, like a, a upside, it's like a tornado sort of on the top of your head, and this is where all the symbols go. And so the, all these symbols were put in us, and these are permanent supposedly, and then you're allowed to be able to channel the universal life force energy and heal people or heal, and you can also Reiki uh, times, you know, like you had 12 o'clock in the daytime, somebody's having surgery, you can actually Reiki, and, Reiki that time and send universal life force energy to that particular time, which is very strange. You can send Reiki um Long distances. You can. Uh, there's there's a lot of different things you can do, Chris. Um, so uh, it's kind of like everything was thrown out the door as far as as everything I learned about how to do Reiki. These demons were teaching me another way. Um, I wasn't putting my hands, you know, in in a Reiki situation. You put both your hands together. And the energy supposedly comes through your top of your head and then down out through your hands to the recipient. Now, the person getting the Reiki treatment, and just like whenever I got it done, you feel something. 
you feel something going in you. Um, I would close my eyes, and when I first started getting it done, I would see all these colors, every color of the rainbow in succession. I would see this. And you, you see things, you have visions of all these colors and everything. And then, you know, later on, then I started seeing these faces. But we'll get to that in a little bit. But like I said, they pretty much threw everything out the door as far as what I learned. Um, I was in, in what I was told was from these uh, spirit beings that I was talking to. I was channeling energy straight from God, great, straight from the source. So I would bring my right hand up towards the sky, and then my left hand would be down to the recipient, which is basically opposite of everything that we learned when we learned how to do this, this Reiki. So this was called spirit energy, and they, it wasn't even called Reiki. And I started doing healings on people, and people started being healed. And I started being able to just sense that somebody was sick. I would see uh, darkness um, in certain parts of somebody's body. I started sensing energy. I could feel heat coming out of people's energy. I mean, it, it just got extremely, um, what's, I don't know exactly the word to say. Um, I started healing people. Uh, I, but I knew it wasn't me, and I kept telling everybody, this is God doing this work. So here comes God into the picture. And I was always a believer in God. I always believed in Jesus Christ. I knew who God was. I knew who Jesus was. But that's about as far as it went. I started believing in reincarnation. Uh, people's past lives started coming into the picture. Um, the beings would come into the room when I was doing healings on people, and they would uh, give messages to people. Um, people had experiences on the table when I was doing this Reiki. Uh, people levitated. Um, other people came in, and they saw these beings come in with this wand and scan the body. It was like about a foot long. It was like a... a kind of electric blue color and they scanned the body and then they took the wand and turned it straight up and down like you were going to poke it at somebody and put it right between this person's eyes and did something there was always something so strange going on you know a lot of people were taken aboard the ship and there were like these little three foot tall not really typical gray looking uh, beings that they saw but they were short uh, little beings, and I had a Christian friend, the one that actually helped me see the light, basically, and, and, and turn my life over to the Lord Jesus Christ, but she actually had Reiki treatments from me, and she has told me that the Lord told her not to go to my house every single time whenever she came over and uh, she still came anyway so she was disobedient and but that's between that's between her and, and her heavenly father that's not for me to say because in the end I was pulled out of everything and I was I was saved I've, I've been redeemed and I thank the Lord Jesus Christ for that every day and and I'm just thankful I can I can come on here and and talk about how evil this is you know I see all kinds of stuff where Christians are practicing this and this really this scares me because people don't have any idea what they're doing bringing these uh, demons into their lives well uh, Lynn a lot of people would say in the Reiki world that um, you know demons exist but they aren't their spirit guides or that they can even do exorcisms with Reiki and sort of this reverse psychology can you speak a little bit about how you found out or and how maybe other reasons that people can know that what they're dealing with is in fact demons and and that they are deceiving uh, entities well why would um these spirit guides if they are who they say they are why is their main focus on trying to just make uh jesus uh they call him sananda why would they try to just make him another ascended master why would they try to why would they, I, that's what I never understood is is if if they're so good and if they're doing everything that they should be doing and if they're really serving the most high God like they say that they are 
how come they hardly ever say any, they never say the name of Jesus? They'll always call him Sananda, or they'll call him, there's a couple other names, and I can't remember them right now, but they're always discrediting Jesus. They don't talk about that very much, and, and they just say he's another ascended master, just like Buddha. He was a teacher. You know, they, uh, people don't really understand who they're messing with. Um, and, and if people think that the devil won't heal somebody, you're sadly, sadly mistaken. The devil will heal. I've seen a bunch of people healed. And I don't know if they're healed to this day. I have no idea. But to to sink people into this even deeper, he will heal. So when did those particular entities that they were always very um they were very friendly. They were always talking about love and peace and these kinds of things. Did they ever reveal reveal their true colors? Only after I was born again did I ever know who they really were. And and was that a very uh, big experience? Did they? <laughs> it's still going on to this day. Uh, that's been almost two years ago now, and it doesn't happen every night like it used to. But they still come in and they try to paralyze me, and they try to torment me and push me down in the bed and hold me down. And and uh, now it feels like saran wrap is all around me in one big piece, and it's just squeezed tighter and tighter. But um, as as I've gone along, the Lord Jesus Christ is blocking something from happening. You know, there's like a little. I think they use the the pineal gland. I think that is a doorway of some kind. And it's almost like they send a signal. Now, I used to, if I didn't plead the blood of Jesus or call out to Jesus, I was paralyzed. And then I had to do it in my mind, and it stopped immediately. But now, about in the last two months, they're sending signals, but I'm not paralyzed. And last night even, I could tell that the signal was way stronger. It's almost like they turned up the power on it or something. And it almost sounds like an electrical buzz in my head, but it's I'm not getting paralyzed. Um, there is, I think there are stages to this, and I'm talking about something that um, people you, you can't even understand. Probably there's no there's no science to this. There's there's no, it's just ex experiential. Um, Knowledge, I guess, is the only thing that I can go by and what the Holy Spirit tells me is all I can go by. You know, you just don't hear anything about this. Now, Lynn, you're a pretty interesting case in that, uh, well, most of the time when people do are involved in the occult and in some level, and then they turn their Lord life to the Lord, they are able to generally start to begin to end and terminate the sleep paralysis experiences or whatever is happening uh, almost immediately, and if they, you know, and, and it really tends to uh, be gone more quickly. Yours has been more of a slow process. Um, do you see that? Do you see that? Is it possible that maybe a doorway was opened so big that it took a lot longer to close? Or what's your view of, of maybe why that's continuing a little bit more for on your case? I think that if it hadn't have been for the fact that I would never charge uh, my clients for their Reiki treatment like the like the beings wanted me to, I think it's the only thing that saved me. I think it's the only thing that saved me from from uh, the Lord completely giving me over to Satan. I, I really believe that that is the only thing because I would never charge. And I've never been a greedy person. So um, I think it's the only thing that saved me. I basically turned my whole life over to demons. Um, I didn't know that it was Satan, but it makes no difference if you know or not. That's not the important thing. I had no idea. The fact is, I worshipped other gods. I put other gods before my heavenly Father. Period. Right. So I I sometimes uh, think of your situation kind of like, um, you know, there is there's you are redeemed from the sin. You are totally redeemed from it. But there are still effects of the sin. Kind of like an ex alcoholic may have residual liver dam damage. He is, of course, cleaned in Jesus Christ, but there is still, you know, reasons why he has, you know, things that are sort of injured that are, um, and I think maybe that doorway was opened a little bit. And that's why God, God, it seems, um, has rules against sin is because it's dangerous for us. It's not rules that he makes up arbitrarily. It's that he knows what's good for us. And so that's why he says not to do certain things.
Exactly. Exactly. There's, you know, and the Bible says not to talk to the dead. There's reasons why. It's because those familiar spirits, you know, our, it, it says in the Bible, and I'm not sure where it is, but it says there's a great gulf because um, somebody's over and his tongue's hot and he, he just wants the, um, this other guy to come over there and put some water on his tongue. And they say, no, you can't go over there and he can't come over here. There's a great gulf. And there's a great gulf between the earth and where our loved ones are that have passed away. You, they cannot come down here and visit us. You know, before I ever had anything happen, uh, my dad, which had passed away 16 years ago now, um, he came to me in a dream and said I was going to go through my enlightenment. Well, that wasn't my dad. But, you know, I, it, it opened the door. It made me, I wanted to go to psychics so I could talk to him more. I did all these things thinking that that was really him. Right. You know, in 2001 was the first time I ever left my body. And I wasn't even in the occult then. I was in a, a very sinful relationship. I was uh, in a same-sex relationship. And I was that way for a very long time. So uh, the occult is, is the worst thing that I've done. But I, I've also opened other doors. But I do believe, and in, in, um, I've heard people say, that whenever you mess with stuff in the occult, as I did, you, there is a veil that God has put there to protect us from the spiritual world. To keep these uh, people that don't mess with the occult don't have these kind of experiences. This veil has been ripped whenever you mess with the occult. It, it's I'm not sure if it's all the way taken away or if it just has a rip in it. But then we're subjected to the demonic world, the spiritual world, and. I, this holds true. Everybody I've talked to, and you know, the Lord has brought a lot of people to me, and there's been a lot of people that have been set free. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ for that. You know, um, and it's not me. I I have nothing to do with it. I'm just a tool. I'm just a sinner. I, that's all I am. I'm nobody. You know, all the glory goes to the Lord, where it should be. I'm not. I just people um, hear my story or something and. You know, Lynn Marzulli will, will talk about me taking pictures, and, and the Lord has got somebody there that did exactly that same thing. And I believe that the Lord will use this. There's somebody out there that's doing Reiki that may even believe it's Christian. They may be in the church that may not even be thinking they're doing anything wrong. And they may hear this, and then they're like, oh, my gosh, you know, and repent and, you know. Amen. Well, let's talk a little bit about Reiki and th things like that, some of the common deceptions and stuff. First of all, really quick, I want to hit on something you just said. Um, when you said that that wasn't your dad that you were talking to, a lot of times people will have these experiences where they talk to a dead family member and they are deceived in that the person, the, the, the dead apparition or whatever, knows something that only their you know father or mother would have known. And in in of course the demons would have been assigned to that situation they they are aware of those things that only it's only your you know loved one and the demons that were there know about it would you exactly. see it the same way is that being demons sort of uh, doing their thing of of tricking people absolutely you know they follow um family lines they follow us you know um these, these demons are assigned to us. They know everything about us. They would know every single thing about my dad. They would know what he wears. They, they would probably know what he was buried in. They would know probably the most intimate details right. uh, about my dad to be able to uh, mimic him and, and um, imitate him. Sure. And just a quick uh, overview of some of the things about angels and, and demons and, and, this, and Satan in the Bible. Here's just a few of the things that the Bible says about demons. That they can talk, uh, they have memory, they have free will, they have feelings and emotions, uh, including anger and fear. They can see, they walk to and fro in the earth and seek rest, they seek and accept worship, they have intelligence, they know their time is short, they recognize who the saved are. They testify to the divinity of Jesus Christ. They believe that there is one God, and they are aware of their destiny, and they influence man to lie. And those all have scriptural references um, many, many, in many places. So, um, okay, let's talk a little bit about Reiki. Now, one of the things I was noticing last night is that the 
attunement process seems to be, at least the initial attunement process seems to be, uh, for most people that may have not had any other entrance to the occult in any other time, it seems to be a systematic way to possibly get people to accept uh, demonic uh, influence, if not even possession. It seems from watching the videos and reading a little bit about it, that the most important part of the attunement process was actually the beginning part where they were telling people to call upon your angels and to be open to whatever happens. And that whole process of, of being open and calling upon these spirit guides and everything was the main thing, that the demons needed the free will to enter and to influence but all the rest of it seemed to be kind of a song and dance to make the person think it was really, really special. What's your view of the attunement process? Where does the where is it happening? Well, the attunement process, I do believe, is um, they're putting demons in you. Uh, I think it is possession. Um, I think that it's very dangerous. Uh, opening yourself up to these beings is nothing good, and. They'll make it look like it's good. You know, there'll be a lot of people out there going, well, I haven't had any bad experiences. Well, I didn't either until I was born again. I never had any bad experiences. And I talked to Lynn Marzulli, and he said, you're going to find out that they're not good. I've, you know, he's he's been where I've been. And, um, you know, he was he was into, like, Buddhism and Hinduism and type stuff like that and, you know, left his body and all that. So um, all these things that I did. And uh, he knew. He knew, and he told me, and I found out. And there, the mask was ripped off. But people don't understand. They can't understand how they have this idea that everything that's bad, well, it couldn't be doing any good, and they couldn't act like they're good. There's just, you know, Howard Howard Pittman, you know, he he died, and he was. He was a lukewarm Christian. He was a preacher, and he was taken um, up to the third heaven. And he actually said that uh, this very sweet voice, um, unlike anything that human ears have ever heard, told him to stop breathing and all the pain would go away. And he snapped too, and he realized that it was Satan talking to him and trying to tell him uh, to, you know, take the will away. To, to stop breathing because if he had done that he he very well could have gone to gone to hell because he was very lukewarm and he he woke up but people just chris i, I don't know people just got to understand you know we've got to test these spirits if there's christians out there doing reiki they've got to test the spirits now you said you had a uh, spirit guide or two now how common is that in Reiki? Was that is that viewed as a very common thing to have a spirit guided? It, from what I saw and everybody I knew that did Reiki, and the lady that was my quote unquote mentor, um, she talked with Abraham, and you know she was married, and Abraham got her up at four o'clock every morning and took her on an out of body experience. She was gone two or three hours. Now, how she could figure out if it's two or three hours or not, I don't know. I never understood that because there is no time outside of this physical world right here. But she seemed to think, I guess in physical time, she was gone two or three hours. But um, everybody seems to have these spirit guides that, that relay information about the person. They will tell you where the person's sick, what's going on, you know, if there's uh, some kind of tumor, there's some kind of a stomach problem, there's some kind of a, a occlusion in the vein, you know, I mean, there's just a lot, a lot of things. And a lot of times it has to do with uh, past lives. Um, there was one particular girl that I worked with, and she had had a pain in her stomach area right below her rib cage for as long as she could remember. And I just put my hand on it and just kind of pulled all this energy out, and the pain went away. And the information came through to me that uh, she was some kind of a warrior uh, thousands of years ago, and some kind of a sword had been stuck in her. And this was an energy imprint into her uh, astral body. And this is this is what her problem was. So it just opens us up more and more and more to these ideas and to these. It's just getting further and further away from 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 God and the scriptures, and and the Bible. You know, these right. these beings are not talking about, 
you know, the Bible or anything like that. Well, well that's the one thing about it is it seems to be a pretty big elaborate thing to get people to be proven to themselves that not only are they are they special but also sort of as you were kind of saying sort of deeper into the the idea the paradigm therefore sort of being kind of locked into it when somebody tries to approach them and say no that's demons they'll be absolutely adamant that it's not because after all they've been proven that it works so many times in the occult the resistance to anything being wrong with it is the fact that they've seen results and so i think that in a lot in some cases i think we may have talked about this before which where it almost seemed like the demons were causing the illness in the first place and that their quote unquote cure was essentially you know leaving the situation to give the effect of a healing uh did you ever feel like that in retrospect that the demons were actually causing some of the healing or causing I do some believe, of the problems I do believe that now I do believe that they they cause problems um so that um the deal is whenever you get healed like this, um, just like my eyes, for instance. And you know, when I was getting Reiki treatments and I was deep into the occult, possessed to the toenails and everything, but I wasn't bad. I was not, I was not a Satanist. I, I didn't worship the devil. I was I was I was a good person. I can honestly tell you, I was a good person. You know, I've heard people say that I'm a good person. I'm, I'll go to heaven. You know, I wasn't doing anything wrong. I was not. I was trying to help people. I didn't want to charge them, even though the beings kept saying to charge. But it's 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 very deceiving that way, very very deceiving. It, it's it's beyond anything I can possibly even tell you how deceiving it is because you just don't understand who you're dealing with. Right. Well, um, okay. Let's look a little bit into the you know, um, the alien aspect of it. Now, that's a pr relatively uncommon thing, would you say? Um, or do you find in the community of Reiki that people were having a lot of these types of experiences? Do you, I guess, as a broader question, do you find that people in Reiki uh, are dealing with um, increasing levels of um, open doors and therefore spiritual contact? Well, talking about open doors, um it all started, like I said, it started with me talking to the dead and learning how to do this and being a psychic and opening all these doors. And then I got into crystals and, and doing all this. And then those beings started talking to me that said they were circling the planet. And then that's when the, when the alien beings come through, you know, said they were Arcturians, uh, said they were blue and had a, you know, they described, if you look up an Arcturian, they described exactly what most people say an Arcturian supposedly looks like. They, um, I'm talking about my experience and my mentor. Um, as far as other people having experiences with aliens, I'm sure they're creeping in at some point. They would have to be unless somebody is like really say they're into shamanism, the Native American type thing. Uh, I believe it would be Indians um, with headdresses and everything else may be coming to them. I don't know. They kind of fit your your perspective of what you want to see. Right. If, if I would have wanted to see little gray aliens, I probably would have seen it. I think they would have fulfilled that uh, desire for me to see. I wanted to deal with more angel type things. And why, I don't know, but that is... It started out as Arcturians, and then they went to, well, the, we're, we're actually God's angels. You know, we're actually God's angels, even though we come from planet Arcturus. And, by the way, you're also an alien soul. You know, they, they make up their own ideas. Uh, they talk about, you know, a lot of the Ascension stuff. And I've looked around the Internet. There's a lot of people talking about the same stuff I was told. You know, this has been quite a while now since I was told all this junk. But there's a lot of people out there believing it about this ascension, you know. Uh, people believe that we're going through some kind of shift now. And and uh, people like us, Christians, which are bas basically worthless eaters, um, things are happening and, and there's a shift going on that we don't even know about because we're not part of it. You know, I was part of that at one time, and I was actually going to die. I had to leave this physical world and go into um, 
and be the co-pilot of the ship, which they were training me for. You know, they took me every single night. And this went along with all the Reiki because these people that are doing Reiki, I'm sure that I've seen the websites where people are doing this Christian it's called Christian Reiki. You know, there's also stuff called healing touch therapy that's going on in the hospitals. You know, they're thinking they're channeling the energy of the creator to these people. How can you take something that's bad and turn it for good? There's a scripture about that says, you, you know, I know exactly what you know exactly what I'm talking about. Sure. Well, you know, the ascension part of uh, of it is interesting is that you see that in almost every level of the current occult, whether it be Reiki or just about any kind of thing in the in this so-called truth movement. Everybody is talking about ascension that are listening to um, demons. And, of course, they think that they're sometimes talking to aliens or the dead or, or whatever they believe that they're talking about. It's not just in Reiki. Uh, they, are, mm -mm. they are very vocal about ascension. And, and one of the things that I've tried to point out in um, – uh, my video, the 2012 Deception presentation, is that it's very subtly said that the reason ascension is going to happen, you know, all these people are going to sort of evolve into this next level, but the Christians are still kind of in this old paradigm that are causing wars and all the strife and all the, wor the bad of the world is sort of put on to the Christians. And um, so it's almost like they're holding everybody back from this grand enlightenment. It's kind of the undertone of ascension is get mad at Christians. You know, it, to me, it's a big mm -hmm. preparation for a massive genocide, but it will require uh, a, a bunch, the world to be a slightly different place or a little bit different anyway. Absolutely. You know, and, and uh, if you if you look around, uh, one of the words that I was told about, which uh, I was part of, we were called the Christed ones, C-H-R-I-S-T-E-D ones. That's everywhere. People are talking about the Christed ones everywhere. And back when that was going on, I think that I was trying to look up Christed Ones, and I couldn't find it. But now it's just absolutely everywhere. And talking about, you know, the, the ships are already here and, and how they're going to, you know, beam everybody up, you know. And, and it's it's all crazy, and it's, it's all a big deception. Yeah, and we're the enemy. Right. We're holding it all back. <laughs> right. Well, they're definitely prepping for, for something, and that is speaking the, the powers of hell for their great deception uh, one way or another, however it ends up playing out. Um, okay, so a few more questions here about Reiki now. Um, crystals, do you find that that was a, a separate sort of thing, and what do you view about <clears throat> crystals in general? And and, do, what do, and also, what do is it viewed in as, in general as far as Reiki is concerned? The crystals came into my paradigm of what I was doing because I would use the crystals to lay on the chakras of people, the different colors for the different colored chakras. Uh, the energies actually did stuff, opened up stuff, removed energy, uh, put energy in. You know, I mean, they do a lot of different things. Uh, some of the crystals actually um, bring the... Uh, Ascended Masters in, you know, we're talking about Metatron, all these different things. I used them, um, I had a bedroom, and then I had a bathroom, and then a, a spare bedroom that was right behind my closet, and that was the Reiki healing room. I lived upstairs, my roommate lived downstairs. So they told me how to set up these crystals in the room. Now this all came from... Uh, telepathic communication with these beings told me how what crystals to go get and how to set them up in different uh, formats and different ways to open portals that we needed a gateway for them to be able to come in and out for a couple of different reasons for one I told you they came and got me almost every single night um, to take me on the ship so they had to we had to open a doorway for that and there was also a doorway so they could come in and do these healings through me. Um, by this time, I thought they were pure angels, uh, not demons. I'll make that very clear. I did not know they were demons. And they would come in and they would do the healings and they would do all kinds of, uh, like I said, they'd use these wands on people and they would heal people here and there. And, you know, people would see them. People would see them. People would, it depended on what kind of... Uh, so-called quote-unquote gifts 
the recipient had as to how they perceived these beings coming in. Like I said, some people were taken above aboard ships. Um, these crystals held the energy. You know, um, I was a gatekeeper. My soul, supposedly, my higher self was a gatekeeper and kept all the demonic entities from coming through that doorway. You know, I mean, we're talking about they're they're very smart. They're very crafty. We're not dealing with stupid beings here. So what now being, uh, have sort of seen it in retrospect, what do you view the crystal power is all about? It's all demonic. So they are attaching demons. When they attach energy to crystals, or if it's a very energized crystal, you're, you're uh, seeing a very demonized crystal. Absolutely. Do you have that uh, story that you told about the the one sleep paralysis incident uh, in, your mother's, in your mother's house, I believe it was? Mm-hmm. Was it, if you want to, or maybe anything like that story that sort of illustrates that even being near the crystals uh, can cause that? Right. I was I was still living in Austin, and I came down to my mom's house, um, and I had gotten rid of all my crystals. You know, I, I was born again, all this. So I came down to my mom's house, and I had sleep paralysis really bad. And the Holy Spirit told me that there was a crystal head that I had put in, in my room there at my mom's house, and I had forgotten about it, I guess. And so I found it, and it was a huge one. It's what's called an angel crystal. Actually, you know, crystals transmit, and they receive energy. Well, this one was a big one. It actually brought in, um, it, it brought, de brought the demons to me is what they did. It was, a, it was a gateway. And I found it by the Holy Spirit's guidance. I found it, and... Uh, I took it outside and was going to smash it on the uh, on the street, and so it was pretty big, and I hit it on the ground, and just a little piece broke off, and I was like, wow, this is really a hard crystal, and I picked it up again, and I just, I really hit it hard on the ground, but as I did, I sliced my finger, and whenever that crystal hit the ground, it exploded in a million pieces. I mean, it, it was, there was so much demonic energy within that crystal. I found that crystal, I had to try to pick it up off the street so nobody got a flat. It was, it was way off. I mean, it just exploded. There was so much demonic energy involved in that crystal. You know, and I was binding in, in the blood of Jesus and, and doing all this kind of stuff as much of spiritual warfare as I knew at that time. I was I was doing all I could. Uh, it was it was just incredible that that the Holy Spirit guided me to that crystal. One of the interesting things about and when you see in sort of uh, theological Satanism, uh, when people are knowingly dealing with demons and things, is that they do a lot of rituals to attach demons to objects. They'll even attach demons to certain gifts that they may give to, like a pastor or something like that. Um, so it's not uncommon to attach uh, demons to objects. I think you see this in the Bible, too, with um, there were idols in, uh, in, I think it was Joshua's uh, day, that they, they called it the mm -hmm. the uh, devoted thing. And um, anyway, there, there is a, there's a kind of, that's a, a precedent for that, that these things are attached to objects, and that um, they're, and one a good example, too, for people out there that um, there's sometimes called orgon or organite or whatever, they, I, I had an email one time from somebody who had bought one of these uh, things from a website, and they're supposed to do all this stuff or whatever. And as soon as he brought it into his room, he started having immensely powerful uh, sleep paralysis experiences, you know, uh, seeing the demons, you know, in his room. They were messing with him and all kinds of stuff. It went on for a week till he realized it was the thing that he bought, this organite. He looked on the back of it and checked it out and it had apparently been quote unquote blessed by a Reiki, you know, a you know, process of some sort. So the blessings of Reiki, you know, the in the spiritual life force energy, all this stuff that you're getting the new names for, they kind of like say the word spirit, you know, as like a plural name, you know, that uh but it's actually in fact a, a very uh yeah, a very uh um obvious thing of what's happening, yeah. Okay, if you could maybe explain a little bit about um your, your situation, if you if you have any more to add about how you came out of it, but also to conclude, sort of speak to those people that are involved in Reiki, Reiki right now that uh, that might need to know that might want out. 
Well, people need to understand um, everything is not as it seems. Um, something might might sound real good, might look real good, uh, but if you, especially I'm talking to Christians out there that are bringing Reiki into the church or uh, yoga and these kind of things, it all kinds of go, kind of goes hand in hand. Um, search the scriptures um, and ask the Holy Spirit to show you um, that this stuff's wrong. Um, it's abominations. We're not supposed to be doing it, even though we're doing it as I was doing it. I was doing it in the name of Jesus Christ. I was praying before I, I did the Reiki. I would pray in, in, uh, in Jesus' name. You know, that's that's turning something bad for good. Uh, we can't do that. Um, I just plead with people to, to get out of this stuff before it's too late. Um, Jesus is, is coming back, and uh, we need to be ready. Um, and, and doing Reiki is not the way. This is a warning uh, right now that we, we've got to stop this stuff. I thought I was doing right, and I can stand here and tell you right now that I wasn't. I was not serving God in any shape or form. All right. Well, um, I guess if anybody has any more questions or whatever, um, is there a good place that they can email you, or is there a place that they can get a hold of you, or maybe they can email me and I could forward it to you? How would you like to do that? Absolutely. Uh, I have a Facebook. Um, just type in... Um, Somehow my name got spelled wrong. I think I might have fixed it and it might have reverted back. But just type in Lynn Dickey, L-Y-N-N-E-D-I-C-K-E or L-Y-N-N-E-D-I-C-K-I-E and friend me and uh, I'll be happy to talk to you. Uh, you can contact me by email, which is my, M-Y, little, L-I-T-T-L-E, oso, O-S-O, at M-S-N dot com. Okay. Well, that's great. And then, um, yeah, and then if anybody has any more questions about uh, the gospel or about Jesus or anything, I'll put some links in the uh, the show notes and links in the description section if this is uh, if you're seeing this in a video. So you can check it out there if you have any more questions. Um,